DeSoto Brown and Martin Disbang welcome you back to the show here that looks into if the built environment can't be anywhere closer to the so stunningly beautiful natural Correct. environment. Correct. So we don't give up on that one. No, we don't. We, we, we don't. We don't. Things. We don't. And this is sort of our first fall episode That's of autumn, true. we can say, That's because true. us easy breezy guys, we can actually not sweat at night right. having the window open. I had a blanket last night. There you go. Yeah. It gets chilly, right? It gets chilly. And talking about, get the first slide here, the grass being greener on the other side, mm -hmm. uh, it gets green here when it becomes closer to winter. That's right. right. So this is our hood volcano. That's right. Turns green because uh -huh. there's more rain. That's right. And my Honu, the Hawaiian <laughs> green sea turtle, is back since yeah. a couple of days. So who you who you interact with when you go swimming? We we do exactly. Yeah. All right, good. So usually at other places in the world, these sixty percent of other climate yeah. places, uh, which is tempered, actually things go brown because mm -hmm. these are the leaves falling off the deciduous trees, and after that it gets white. Right? It's a and white Christmas sometimes because there's snow. Let's go to the next slide here. Uh, because our, uh, next slide please, our uh, culinary cosmopolitan connoisseur Clara and Joey, yes. as we reported a couple of shows ago, they are doing a pit stop in the national capital city of Berlin. That's correct. And um, they were going there with their Fiat yeah. 500 that they rented. Yes. And we promised the audience to give a proof of evidence that they have been around here, That's the original right. ones. That's right. In the upper left corner, there is a little Fiat 500 car on Kalakaua Avenue in Waikiki in 1961. There you go. And they were tiny. The, the current yeah. one is almost twice as big. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just... But talking uh, big, uh, as far as our shows about architecture as well, mm -hmm. at the very top right, what do we see there? What do Joy and Clara have? They've got a big lanai. Mm -hmm. with, with a couch on it. And that is something that's very unusual because in Germany, as you keep pointing out, you can only use a lanai for maybe three months of the year, and yet they've got great big ones. And how is that in comparison to here? We they're get bigger. There soon, right? You're telling me they're bigger. They are, they are. So, uh, and in many of the cities at the Pacific Northwest of the mainland, there was already more was. than usual snow. And so there was obviously here in Berlin. You see that German traffic sign here. Mm -hmm. uh, the German, the, your weekly German lesson is Bewohner mit Parkausweis für Zone 29 frei. I spare you on having to translate that. <laughs> and there is a German flag. So that's Berlin, right? Well, that's a trick because <laughs> I wanted you to see that picture to see if you could recognize it. That's actually Merchant Street in downtown Honolulu where you and I frequently stand and have conversations after we have done our Human Humane Architecture show. And that was for the TV show Lost. They threw shave ice on the street, they put up fake signs, and they pretended that it was a street in Berlin. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So let's go to the next slide and not fake, but to real, because yeah. that's what I had to put up with when I was back home for most of the year over my sabbatical. And this is that funny picture that we showed before where we have electrified uh, cross-country skiers. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a guy who stands there, takes the train to go out into the countryside. And what they do around that is what people hope will happen here. And in fact, it happens. We got it's to talk happening. about it today is yeah. transit-oriented development. This is, again, you got to bundle up. You got to have your puffy coat. So that's why the architecture looked like that. And they, they want to like decorate that. It looks yeah. like a down jacket with this yeah. kind of pattern on it. You yeah, know. it's insulated. Never mind. Right. And so uh, go to the next slide. This is the previous city where Joey uh, was in training. This is the only real high-rise city in Germany that's Frankfurt, Germany. And compared, I mean, to, you know, the the top six in, in, in the United States, which we currently have position number six Correct. with almost 500 high rises. That's right. This is ridiculously low. This Correct. is more the average American city. Correct. Somewhere with a couple of them, but they're building the highest, this is your weekly German lessons. Well, I can't remember how to say it, but it means the highest, uh, the highest high rise dwelling tower yes. in Deutschland. That does it. That does it. All right, That's good, fine. Good. And it's that, only 47 stories, though. We it is. It, out. it is. But it also has at least balconies, you know. Mm -hmm. They seem to have a decent size. 
But let's go to the next. Where did this typology of high-rise dwelling basically were, was born? Mm -hmm. That was in the United States. Yes, absolutely. And this is talking Berlin. Uh, who He built uh, uh, the uh, National Gallery in Berlin, one of the most fascinating buildings I've ever seen in my life. And I've been around and I'm an architect. You That's are. Mies van der Rohe project. When he was kicked out, by the Nazis, uh, Lucky America picked him up. Mm -hmm. And lucky and, him. And, and lucky him. And he built uh, these two towers here. This is the Lakeshore Drive uh, apartments from 1951. And don't get your hopes up too high. I can't speak or write Chinese, but I had the chance to write an article for the Chinese Detail magazine. I included that. Took me until my third trip with the emerging generation. I, by that time, I was still in the Midwest, which yeah. Chicago technically belongs yes, to. Is. Yes, it is. And only on uh, the third visit, we realized there's this little door in the back of one tower, and it, it turned out to be an integrated local grocery store. And that lady there in her home dress with her hair, you know, mm -hmm. in the process of being done, walked her lunch, being a sweet potato, up. <laughs> and that is, who would ever thought that Mies van der Rohe was a sustainable architect? Yeah, right. But that's the nature of it, because if you have to go into your multi-story parking garage, take out your car and drive to the big box store, yeah. then what's the point? Exactly. But that's just, that's vertical sprawl, but it's sort of different, but not any better than horizontal sprawl, right? Right, right. So let's move on to the next uh, here. Because there was a rebel kid amongst uh, the Miesian uh, clan, mm -hmm. and those Bertrand Goldberg. And Bertrand Goldberg, almost one and a half decades later, rebelled against the master and said, I don't want to do these square boxes, yeah. they're boring. Yeah. I want to do some fun organic towers. And this is nicknamed the corn cups for obvious reasons, yeah. but uh, the official term is Marina City. And also we said, if you're old enough like we or young uh -huh. to appreciate old movies, That's right. there's Blues Brothers, right, right where their car right. falls off. And, and the bottom, each, the base of each tower is the parking structure, it correct? Is, it is. And then the dwellings yeah. are above that. And talking mixed use, this is really, this is why it calls city. They got restaurants, they got offices, oh, right, they right, got everything right, in there. So right. it's, that was the idea. And that's also that. the zeitgeist of the time, cylindrical buildings. It was, it was. And you saying that, uh, next slide, because it was actually the, considered to be the coolest stuff for yeah. many decades. Right. And people said nothing has happened. Postmodernism really wasn't doing anything anyways. And so it took until the new millennium, and even at the end of the first decade in 2009, where a developer had basically uh, proposed this pretty generic glass box that then the architect uh, studio gang, named after its founder, Genie Gang, was basically took a piece of tracing paper and uh, made it into what you see here, which gave it the name, the Aqua Tower. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of a watery surface, it looks like. It, it is, although to me, it looks like it's not accurately shaved. It's like well, what I, do I know, I know. Times. Yeah, you and I know about shaving but it bald depends. heads. And the, and the middle one is interesting because my best buddy from school who works for Helmut Jan there, Dan Kubrick, hi Dan, he had a project under construction that we were on the top roof and we were looking at it from very straight. And the middle picture is that, and you don't see any of that. You don't see any of the so details. So it gets more dramatic the, the closer you are than the more below you are pretty right. much. Right, right, right. And next slide. Uh, as always being interested in not just the surface, but the substance, Correct. there's this German product that's been around for so long and even made it to cold Canada. It's basically uh, structurally connecting and thermally disconnecting your lanai or your balcony slabs. And the next slide, um, I happened to go in and out of Chicago as my hub when I was still in the Midwest. There's me, the Lincoln lawyer with my Lincoln in Lincoln, Nebraska. And in front of what building? Well, that is the Nebraska State Capitol building, which is a very iconic structure in Nebraska. It is, was built in 1938-39. They were very proud of it as the symbol of their state. Mm -hmm. And it was because it was the first high-rise state capitol building. Yeah. And they didn't need to build a high-rise. There's plenty of space there. It was, wasn't because they were all crowded. It was to make a statement and to become a landmark, which Ab it did. Absolutely. And the the funny thing at the bottom left, probably most people here have never seen, but this is how we heat. And this mm -hmm. is Kirsten's, my landlady at that time. Thank you, Kirsten, was hosting me over the chilly winters, and that kept me warm. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at how the floor slabs basically project out. You see at the very top one that isn't painted yet, I was hoping to see a line yeah. to find that Iso Shock built in there. 
But then it, um, when I moved on to the desert, I did a trip with my emerging generation there to the studio and a German guy in the office of Ginny Gang, and I pulled him aside, not wanting to embarrass him, mm -hmm. and I said, did you or not? And he said, no, we did not. Yeah. So it's pretty much like a radiator. I mean, it gets yeah. cold, right? So you have this cold creeping through. Exactly. And you got to heat against it. So right. I, again, in this day and age, you should have been more more bioclimatic. Absolutely. And to, we're talking about touchy things here. This is probably very sort of Title IX vulnerable, but talking about the typology of, of tall buildings, um, what's the nickname they gave to the Nebraska State well, it, Capitol? Well, it, it was nicknamed the Penis on the Prairie. Yeah, on, on, on the plains. On the plains. For obvious reasons, right? right? And because it's out in the middle of nowhere standing up by itself. And, and besides that, the, the typology of tall yeah. buildings, mainly banks or investment projects, mm -hmm. you know, are very associated to the male dominance yep. in architecture, That's which is right. unfortunate. And so, um, next slide. Um, what's also unfortunate is that uh, discrimination in general, yeah. and then some men taking advantage of their power, and we know this as the Me Too movement in the Hollywood scene. Absolutely, and but it's, no wonder, it's not just in Hollywood. No, and no wonder it also at some point reached the architectural business. Correct. And uh, a man that uh, was uh, up for uh, leaving some penises here in Honolulu. This is Richard Meyer at the very top left. And this is a very sort of respectable architectural online medium architect. And they basically labeled this article a shitty man in architecture. And he was, and he one, was of one of the most them. accused of that bad thing. And so we don't know if because of that or other things or all of that together, his projects got pulled. And these are the two towers right above uh, the basin there. Yeah. And basically, the one behind that, who is basically kicking its balls, <laughs> is we're very happy to announce is a lady, and that's Jeannie Gang. So yeah. Jeannie Gang has a project proposed, and that's the project we're actually going to uh, talk about and right. going to analyze today. So let's go to the next slide. The first uh, time it, was, it got to us was on like uh, electronic newsletters uh, here on our phones. So there was this image of a natural environment of some sort, and then a rendering here, which we're happy to see a sliding door and a lanai, yes. which not all of them have. Mm -hmm. But then we saw the glass guardrail, which we're not so much fans no, we're of. we're not fans We of. talked about it no. a couple of times. But then let's go to the next slide. This is a screenshot from the Hard Use website here, introducing not just the building, but its designer, Jeannie Gang, and they call her here the relationship builder. And she's very open and upfront to begin with and said the inspiration of the building is a, um, a, an indigenous plant, mm -hmm. sugarcane, and particularly its movement mm -hmm. in the trade winds mm -hmm. that she claims as the inspiration. Right. So let's look into how that sort of plays out. Okay. Or does it she, play out? Or how she pulls it off, or does she? Yeah. yeah. So let's go to the next slide and walk, work our way up. This is the plinth here. Uh, this is a rendering. It has, you know, cafes and restaurants and all this stuff that makes it urban, right? That's what everyone has. Um, we were hoping, you know, the Hale Nohana that we were doing a show about recently went a little step further because they claim to have an urban farm mm -hmm. in the building. Mm -hmm. So rather than like in the middle where Gundula Potch, who was one of our recent guests, and she's a... Um, she's an expert in urban farming, and she was at the Howard Hughes model and pointing out the staircase, uh, parking garage, yeah. tower of the Whole Foods, they paint it green and she found this rather shallow <laughs> and, and saying, you know, she was proposing what the, the other project basically does to actually grow your food Correct. and not just sell it and sell right. it for too expensive, which was Whole right. Foods pretty much is about, right? Right, right, right. So right, let's right. go to the next slide and move more up in the building. We're here on, the, in, on its plinth which looks pretty generic. We got the pool. We got a couple of trees there, which is good because the last project there, the How It Use Affordable, only had one tree. We got some more, but mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it wants to compete with, up to this point, still the most innovative vegetative right. facade is the TJ Max parking garage. Right. Go figure, right? Right, right, right. So let's now move up into the dwelling units here. Next slide. So this is the, they got, they got from studios, which this is up to, I think three bedroom is like the largest. So they got a variety. And down there they have a little diagram and, and they say basically what's so innovative is they have a wet zone, which is the bathroom and the kitchen. Then 
transitioning into a dry zone, which is basically the unit. And how innovative does that sound? Well, it doesn't sound very innovative because isn't that the way every high-rise building is I, built? I guess so, I, right? So this, I'm not an architect, uh, but I'm is, guessing that. This sounds like rebranding a really yeah, old yeah, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. that isn't really bioclimatic and innovative. And another thing they claim, they say they bent the units towards the ocean view and next slide is that something really novelty and innovative no because we've already seen it in other buildings and we saw it in the outrigger hotel yeah. from the 1960s and almost all of them have them in other right. buildings right so let's continue our search next slide here uh, we did a show about lanai's pretty yep. much you see the floor plan here, the first time the whole floor plan, it's a double loaded corridor, which is unfortunate because we opt for a single loaded. And so you don't get the cross breeze. And then at least this tower has a lanai, which is good. Mm -hmm. But then again, we were looking up another term uh, that is describing these sort of lanais, if there are some even better, and that's the term loggia. Yeah. And loggia, by definition, says it's a balcony that's open to one side or more. Right. But the or more doesn't exist here. Correct. It's actually only open, and that basically yeah. traps the heat yeah. and doesn't allow the natural ventilation to do its job as much. And then on top of that, you have the glass guard right, rail. Right, which is just keeping heat in. Exactly. And at this point, let's be sort of sentimentally romantic about some buildings from the uh, mid-century, easy breezy, pioneering era, and that's the next slide here. And which are these? Well, the Ala Moana building, we are very fond of that, and we're also fond of the uh, 1350 um, Ala Moana condo as well. Mm -hmm. The Ala Moana building obviously had its exterior louvers that moved, yeah. and the Ala Moana condo is, is open, but it's also, as we, you were pointing out, it's also got solid walls mm -hmm. to help insulate from... Yeah, shade, the danger of much. too much glass, yeah. which turns you into a hot box. And insulating through shading. Yeah. Today, no one would ever do that. You want glass, yeah. glass, glass, yeah, yeah, view, yeah, yeah, view, yeah. view. But saying that brings too much overheating, so maybe we got to, yeah. like the indigenous, the all-fetched holly was right. like, well, we keep the heat out. It's That's hot right. enough. That's right. We need to stay cool, and sometimes maybe a little less slide isn't mm -hmm. that bad, yeah. right? Yeah. We lost that, unfortunately. Yeah. So next slide here is... The floor plan and larger, so it also has the north air, which we credit them for, so we didn't have to put it in. So the units are pretty much facing east and west, and then it has sort of the end, the two ends of it. But it brings back a good thing as well, which is a little luxury in this sort of very commercial, profit-oriented typology yeah. here, which is that what the Kahala Apartments that we just, thanks to Andrea Gretschi as a resident, yeah. had us there, saw again, and then also the Alamona building that we just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, is putting the hallway of that's accessing the elevator and the yes. staircases, making that run to the very side and getting light in from. So we want to commend yes. it, it for that. Much more pleasant experience in both situations. Absolutely, than the, which we continue then, to call the Shining Corridor yeah. with Jack Nichols. <laughs> the, the scary the corridor. King. Yeah. The so, haunted one. So next slide here. Um, so this is a picture of the architectural model in the Howard Hughes showroom. And um, something we're very sorry and, and sad not to see because Howard Wig and Socrates Pratakos and guys from the authorities have basically allowed us to do our favorite uh, easy breezy staircases and they haven't done this. They interiorized and we were discussing that. Exactly. And it's most likely because they want to maximize the their rentable, space. sellable square right. footage. Right. And staircases are not, so let's just dump them on the inside. Correct. And that's very unfortunate. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Time. So let's go to the next slide. So is this really, I mean, there we see the bottom right is the second Howard Hughes tower that has no lanai's. The very first one has some. So this one here has many. But at this point, we start to question, you know, is it really living up to its sort of mm -hmm. idol of a, of a sugar plant? Mm -hmm. Or is it more or less Correct. a frozen condition, yeah, which it, it is, is anyways, because it can't move. Right. And maybe it takes the whole inspiration to literal, which gets Correct. us to the next slide, because this is how the architectural gazettes are basically talking about it. And at the very bottom, there is a San Francisco tower, and they basically nail it down and saying it's twisting bay windows. So... How did you put it? You said she seems to have that one thing. There's one little, there's one little iconic thing which is mm -hmm. taken for a location and then that becomes the justification or the claim for yeah, what the building yeah. is supposed to be. And that might seem a little shallow and our tropical tutor 
Bill was actually getting even more to the point when we were you know, inv inviting him to the discussion. He said, okay, sugarcane, are we talking indigenous or invasive? And it was, we already said there was an, I mean, you said yeah, you Hawaiians guys brought, brought it, right? Sugar cane but then to the Hawaiian you said Islands. you've been around and, you know, and it's been a while since you saw that. Absolutely. There used to be sugar cane everywhere. Mm -hmm. And everybody who lived here at a certain time in mid-century was surrounded by sugar cane. Yeah. It's all gone now because that's not a crop anymore. Yeah. So how much of an inspiration could it have been for yeah, this building? Yeah, or is it more superficial and superimposed, right? Who knows? And Bill was bringing up the question, maybe it's more about cash crop ability, <laughs> right? Cashing in. <laughs> that, and that, the crop, that is perhaps. And the that crop is perhaps. sells it, right? Yes, perhaps. So the next slide here is another reminder of a building that was probably more bioclimatic if you do the whole analysis, and that's the Lagoon Tower as part of the Hilton Hawaiian Village by Edwin Bauer. And yeah. we talked about it, you know, it, it has these solid parts as well here on the south side, you know. Yeah. And, and actually the, the level of, of exotic, erotic curviness mm -hmm. is actually way more sexy mm -hmm. than I think mm -hmm. the other one mm -hmm. will be. Mm -hmm. So again, maybe revisit these things and, right. and try to be better than them. And next, uh, one to pour a little bit more water into this wine here. This is the largest unit, and it's facing the very uh, Mackay end of it. And so, uh, and up there, you see the panoramic of the Howard Hughes uh, models, and it's it's put in there in the middle. And while again, the north era north is up. So while this sort of lanai is facing south, so that shades. But then there is this huge window on the side. It's facing south and southeast. So let's go to the next slide, which uh, the renderer here was, was honest about, and he rendered the sun that basically comes in. So this, from its bioclimatic performance, it's pretty much the glass box. Yeah. That's, as you always so spot on call it, gets ornated mm -hmm. as something Hawaiian, mm -hmm. but it's basically a dress, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not inherent, it's Correct. not substantial. Correct. And we were sort of joking because we looked like, how does actually, the uh, sort of inhabited environment of people and plants engage. Mm -hmm. And these are two, they call them the red bugs. Uh, and they, they have fun, they make love and on one leaf. So That's maybe right. you could have yeah. investigated a little bit more in the actual thing to stay true to your kind of promise even more. And from which capacity are we talking? Let's go to the next slide. What is that, DeSoto? Well, this is your project in Germany, and it's the Treetops uh, mm -hmm. Apartments. Yeah. Um, these apartments are not dissimilar from what we just saw, but yeah. you did point out that in the, the windows on the right in mm -hmm. this picture, there are shades, yeah. so they obviously do have to keep the sun out to some degree. Yeah. But this is, this is a building built to take advantage of the trees which were already in place, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, this tower that we're talking about in Honolulu is far, far, far taller than that. So it won't be, ever, ever be exactly the same no. as what you did. And, and this situation is almost reverse or flip mirror to the hard use situation. So we have the lanai on the left, and, and he has yeah. it on the right and vice versa. Yeah. This unit is the top unit, so it doesn't get the privilege of the trees. The, the floors below basically are, are shaded better. Uh, next slide uh, shows the project here in plan with a north arrow. And this was, by the way, built one and a half decades ago. Yeah. So um, we got sliding doors, uh, we got the glass guardrails, which we're happy because when it got that brisk wind, it's you kind want, of nice to be You sheltered. want a windbreak, exactly, so and a cold saying, wind. If Martin has been built like that some one and a half decades ago in a totally in, opposite in a climate, climate, then don't do it here, right. right? Because then it doesn't fit here. Correct. And that's what we're saying. But how could we build here? That's the point. So right. we're going to... Close out the show right. with some polemic propositions. Right, go to the right, next right. slide. So what do we see here? Well, we see one of the Primitiva towers, and this is one of the towers that your classes have dis have uh, designed. And we've got an exterior sort of a netting, which can be used to collect water from when there's rainfall. And the rainfall water can be used not only for growing plants, but also people can actually bathe in it if they want to. Yeah. And this is sort of like, you know, the same theme of that they just, you know, made up intellectually of the mm -hmm. zones. But this is zoning this really it more does. logically, right. because at the most peripheral, that's where the water is, mm -hmm. that's where it rains, and you mm -hmm. can catch that as you perfectly mm -hmm. analyze that. Correct. And then you can capture it, 
And it also can overflow and basically feed the next zone, which mm -hmm. is the vegetated zone. Correct. And past that, there is no rain coming in anymore because the layering kind of helps. So I think that's something we would suggest. If you come up right. with a theme, then be serious and, and live up to that. Right. But you got to then go out of your way, I guess, got to get out of the conventional. You do. Oh, yeah. And, and in another way, too, and this is really exciting, get up the next slide, because you told me a story just before the show yeah. that fascinated me. So yeah. tell well, us. Well, one of the things that you've been saying is, can people live more communally? Can people live more openly in some mm -hmm. of these, in some of these uh, theoretical buildings that, that your classes have designed? Yeah, yeah. And I told you that one of my coworkers at Bishop Museum, when he was a child, he lived in Waimanalo, and he and his family, every summer, would camp mm -hmm. for the whole summer mm -hmm. on the beach at Waimanalo. They lived right near yeah, there. And there were no, as we kindly call them, suburban no. nomads or homeless, no. right? No, no, they no. were workforce people. And they just but said, choose to live outdoors exactly, and exactly, outside. Exactly. And because they would then get there and spend the whole summer there, the city and county yeah. began to say, well, wait, you can't stay here the whole time. You have to have a permit yeah. and you got to leave for more people so, to come So here. that makes the sort of proposition less weird because, you know, why do we have right. to carve out our, why have to own and possess mm -hmm. and, and be obsessive with possessing? Why can't we share more, you know? And, right. and this is what Primitiva is suggesting. And, but next slide, second to last, if you want to live more compartmentalized, there's Primitiva 1. And again, it's taking nature as an inspiration in a less uh, sort of literal way, but more figuratively. But it looks, it, the, the form of the tower is cylindrical and that mm -hmm. has a very pragmatical reason because you want to build uh, in the most economical, in the most efficient and effective way. And a hollow tube is the most structurally sturdy. It's actually more sturdy than a solid know. rod. I didn't and know. And that's as one of the reasons why bamboo chooses Absolutely. that form. Mm -hmm. So again, nature can be an inspiration, but then nothing looks, I mean, architecture is architecture, nature is right. nature, but this is, is, is employing and basically applying means and methods of nature Correct. Uh, for architecture, right. but not trying to mimic not it. Not trying right. to make it look like it is, literally. So phasing out the last slide, thanks to our uh, founding father and uncle, Jay Fidel here, who sent us uh, an announcement last night. What, what was that about? Well, it's that the Ala Moana Center is asking for a variance in its uh, height limitation so mm -hmm. that it can build up to 400 feet, which the surrounding properties are now being constructed that way as we have talked about, mm -hmm. particularly because the transit station is going to be there. Mm -hmm. And so this could mean some very dramatic changes for that particular area of town. Yeah, and they were pointing out a particular site, which is next to the Macy's. Right. On the ocean side, and this is exactly where we had proposed this one here a while ago. This is one of the potential locations for Primitiva mm -hmm. One, and we basically uh, proposed that as to be the proletarian people power right. tower Primitiva, right. and it's housing the workforce that works on the mall, that do all the dirty jobs and the low paid, who have to drive far out to the Eva Plains and get up at two in the morning yep. to make it here. Right. Keep these people where they work, they will be way more productive, they will be way more happy. Yeah. And then you f infuse it according to exotic escapism expert Suzanne, there's a new sort of future yeah. of tourism yeah. where you're more a visitor, a short-term visitor, yeah. you're more inclusive, so you want to mingle and live with these people and right. work together. So that's what we would propose Correct. if one would ask us. And we probably have to turn to this developer I heard it's a Canadian guy, so well, we maybe need to knock on their door and say, hey, how about that? <laughs> yeah. A anyway, so more about that in the next shows. Uh, we see you next week for another episode of Human Humane Architecture. And until then, please stay substantially versus so facially green. All right. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs>